Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just put a full step-by-step -step guide together today, just showing you investigating and fixing a knock sensor fault on this 2016 Citroen DS4. It's a two-litre diesel engine. Now, I can use this for this same knock sensor fault on some of the other Citroen and Peugeot models, basically with the same engine in it. Um, but to start with, we'll just show you the fault codes that we've got, then we'll get it up in the air and just run you through where the knock sensor is located and how to replace it. So basically we're using the top down scanner again and we've done a full code scan with it i always like to do a full code scan to start with we've got a few other codes in there but that uh, are not relating to what we're looking into tonight now the, normally the codes are stored in the ecm the engine ecu um, but the, the issue that we've got with this one the codes do come into it you can clear them out and they'll sometimes stay out for three or four miles before they come back on now these codes have been cleared about five or six times now and they keep coming back i haven't actually got them on the screen at the minute but basically i'll just run you through what the codes actually were that were stored in it we had p2202 p2a00 and u029d all relating to the knock sensor. The P codes are just straight knock sensor codes and then the U code is a communication code with the knock sensor. So sometimes they'd, they'd come straight back after half a mile, uh, but this time I haven't actually got them in at the minute, that's also. But I'll just, uh, I'll just show you now, just before we get it up in the air, once the knock sensor has been replaced, there are actually there is actually an option for doing some sort of programming after we've fitted the new knock sensor as well. So I'll just show you that quickly. Um, but what I'll do is just run through that once we've fitted the actual sensor. Um, but using the scanner again, if we go into special functions, and so you've got an option for spare part. Once you go on here, we've got the emission control circuit. And you can just see in there we've got an option for replacement of the knock sensor obviously we're not going to do that now we'll just get it up in the air show you where the knock sensor is located we'll run through replacing it and then we'll run through that procedure after and just before we get into the video if you haven't already subscribed to the channel just click on the red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any future content Right, so now that we've got it up in the air, I'll just show you where the knock sensor is located and a couple of tests just to do before replacing it as well. And I'll just run you through some of the other bits on the system. Um, but just coming underneath from the front, just at the front of the exhaust here, we've got the AdBlue injector. Now these can be a problem, the ends of them, the AdBlue tends to crystallise. And it's quite an easy job to just undo that clamp there. You can take them off and just clean that out on the inside. Um, but next to that... We've got the DPF pressure pipes there. There's some rubber hoses on, which will go up to the pressure sensor. Um, but then we're coming down a bit further, just to where this back clamp is. And then we've got the knock sensor just located at the top there. And the wire comes down and it's got a little ECU section on it that just tucks on here. And I'll just show you, uh, we've got a new genuine knock sensor. Now if you check the links in the description below, I'll put the links to the part number where you can get them from. And we've also got one of these 22mm crow's foot spe spe specifically for knock sensors. You can see it quite nicely wraps around just to get a really good bite on it because it can sometimes be quite tight. So, um, But yeah, I'll put links to them in the description below. Um, I'll just show you, just before actually replacing it, just some of the checks to do. Basically, we're just going to use the multimeter just on the voltage setting and just some of the important checks you just want to do quick is just make sure it's got its 12 volt feed before just replacing it and jumping in it being the knock sensor at fault. So, um, but basically, as it stands at the minute, this end feed there should be 12 volt and then that's the supply in and the two can lines that we need to be checking, the two middle ones, it should be around about two and a half volts. So I'll just set the multimeter up and just show you them. At the minute, I've just put the ignition on stage two just to test them. So I'll just run through that quickly now. Uh, so we've got the multimeter, we'll set up on the voltage setting. I'm just gonna use the exhaust to use as a nerf and then we're just gonna use this to probe, back probe the wires there. So I'll just run you through that now. Uh, 
And I just have to quickly nip up and put the ignition on again because it times out and goes off after so long. But if I just put that on the nerf now. You can see we've got 12 volts in there on that pin. So it's got its supply. And we'll just check the two can lines next. So we've got 2.55 on there. And again, 2.6 on there. As long as it's roughly around the two and a half volts, that's fine. So. So we know we've got the two can line wires and the 12 volt in. So I'm just happy at that, just to replace the knock sensor now. So just run you through how to replace it. Right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, you just need a little gray tab there. You just need to pull it back. Once you've got it back, you can just pinch that up and you can take the connector off. Now that the connector's out of the way, basically we've just got a 10 mil nut to undo here, and then it's just on like a little sort of clip piece at the front. We should be able to then just get this little guard off, then we'll run you through undoing the actual knock sensor itself. Move the guard off there, it actually holds the knock sensor in it. You just need to now just pinch these little pegs up there and should be able to get the knock sensor out. Just unclip the wiring harness out of there, that's all. Now that we've got that out of the way, the next thing we're ready to do is take the knock sensor out. I'm hoping it's going to crack off and come undone okay. If it sort of cracks off and comes loose straight away, then it's, it's nice and straightforward. But these can often take the threads with them. So if it's tight all the way, it will be pulling the threads. Uh, there are a few options out there for repairing knock sensor threads. Again, I'll put in the um, description below a few links to some of the repair bits you can get. But most of the time, the rear ones tend to come out okay. So. So with this one being a bit further back, sort of cracked, it's just cracked off and should be able to just wind it out by hand. Obviously it's not too bad with the old one, but with the new one, you just want to make sure that you keep moving the wire around with the sensor so that you don't damage it. And so that's the old one out of the way. Next step now, I'm just gonna refit the new one. And it does come with some heat resistant grease already on it. So we'll just get that installed, connect it up, and then run you through that keratin procedure. Right, so everything's all fitted back up now. Now these don't need to be silly tight, just a reasonable nip on them, um, but the connector's all connected back up now and everything's back as it was. I'm um, just gonna drop it back down now and just run you through the programming. Right, now I might have created a few faults. We're obviously disconnecting the sensor and putting the new one on there. So I'm just going to do a quick scan. If there is any codes, just going to clear them out, and then we'll run through that programming.
Uh, so we're now ready to run through the knock sensor replacement. Just see at this stage, one of the requirements that does want is the engine must be higher than 70 degrees. So just get that up to temperature quick before we carry on. Obviously I'll just speed through this step until we get there. Uh, should have got that up to 70 degrees now. If you haven't got it up to 70 degrees and you try and continue, it'll just come up with an error telling you that you're not up to temperature. So. Right, so as finished the routine now, I've just had to um, speed the video and just skip a little bit. It's just I didn't, I've not done it before using this machine. I didn't know exactly how long it was going to take, um, but actually running through the routine actually took eight minutes. Um, but I'll just run you through exactly what it did, rather than just obviously leaving the screen for you to stare at. Basically, once it got up to temperature and it started running through it, it ran nearly at a full five minutes just at idle. Once it got to about roughly five minutes, it picked the revs up to about 2,000 RPM. It ran at that for another three minutes, and then it just come up with routine completed, and then you just pressed OK to get back to the main screen there. So basically, that's the new sensor fitted. We ran through all the programming. All I'm going to do now is just give it a decent road test and just make sure that no faults come back in it. Uh, but I've been really happy with this machine. It's just another thing that it's proved it can do. So not a lot of the cheap. Obviously, this is a little bit dearer than some of the other machines, but it does uh, show it's got full capability of some of the top-end diagnostic machines. Right, so just got back from a really decent road test. We've done about 15 miles. Um, no faults have come up. Run, it's run absolutely perfect. So we've just done a full scan again, and nothing's come back in the in the main engine ECU. Obviously, we have got some of these other issues in there, which are completely separate issues. But uh, the main issue where the knock sensor fault was coming back every time was in the ECM. So, but you can see now that's green. No faults in there at all. So, so quite happy that it's definitely fixed the fault after that road test. And um, that's all it was, just the, the knock sensor. These are quite an expensive unit for what they are, but uh, unfortunately they are becoming quite a common issue now. So just thought I'd put the video together in case anyone wanted to have a go at replacing theirs. Now, I have known these be fitted in the past before without them actually being coded via the ECU. Um, and it has always cleared the codes and not come up with any issues. But if, if you have got a machine to do it and the option's on there to do it, it's always advisable to run through it really so but yeah hope you like the video if you did give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and we'll see you next time